in Westwood where uh, UCLA is. And um, it was like the theater from uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood where she goes in to watch her own movie, Sharon Tate watches her own movie. That's that, that movie theater. Anyway, there was a lot across the street that was empty. So the, the production company put up food trucks all around this empty lot and then really beautiful tables and then it was all fenced off with like curtains and stuff and fencing so no one could look in. And it was really fun. So um, it was, I can tell you like that whole night was a ton of people who I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. So I was there, my girlfriend's there. I had a good friend of mine who was a, who's a film editor. I had him as one of my guests uh, come as well for the after party especially. And um, literally there's paparazzi outside. I'm like, what, paparazzi? Well, it was because of who, who was in the film. Like so many people were in Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. So I'm, Ming was there as well. I'm at the party, I'm outside. I think I have a, a drink in my hand. I'm talking to someone and all of a sudden I hear, I turn, okay. And I'm like, Brian! And I turn, and over my shoulder behind me, sitting at a table, is Mark Hamill. And Mark Hamill's like, Brian! And I literally did the, the silly, cliche movie thing where I did, I did, me? <laughs> yes, come here. And I was like, holy shit, the Jedi is summoning me to his table. So I went over like, hey, and he's like, hey, Brian, great job. My son is a huge fan of the movie, of your movies that you've been a part of and stuff. I'm like, oh my God, and my girlfriend came over as well. And I'm like, well, thank you so much. And so it's so funny because we take this big group photo of, of his family and me and my girlfriend. And, and I think my girlfriend was here and he's sitting here. And uh, it was weird because when I finally saw the finished photo, it almost looks like he's looking at my girlfriend while we're taking a photo and stuff. And I was just like, did this motherfucker just call me over there just so he could see my girlfriend? I'm like, what the, what the hell is that? A Jedi mind trick bullshit. But uh, he was really great. The same party, uh, because Will Ferrell plays Will and Holly, Sheriff Will and Holly, uh, he's there as well. And he is just genuinely, first of all, when he talks to you, he's like, really quiet. He's like, very nice. Hey, thank you. Good to see you. Like, he's not his Will Ferrell self unless he's performing kind of thing. Same thing with, um, uh, God, the, the comedian who did the parrot from Aladdin, Gilbert Godfrey. Gilbert Godfrey is another, Gilbert is such a quiet speaker, he talks like this, like, we're almost like, what are you, what are you saying? He's like, Gilbert. he's like, that whole like, listen here, yo, blah, blah, blah. like, that's a whole act, that's completely a whole act. Like, even when people do the cameos and stuff, it's him doing that, the, the, the parrot, and uh, every once in a while he would break into the Jerry Seinfeld, like, hey. What's up with Comic Con? Is it a con game? Is it a convention? Is it a contagion? What is it? Huh? That kind of thing. And so uh, meeting Will was really cool. He once did, um, when he was, they were in rehearsals for Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. If you remember, he, if for those who remember when he was on Saturday Night Live, he used to do an impression of uh, Chicago Cubs announcer Harry Carey. Hey! He had the goofy glasses, like, if you were a hot dog, would you eat yourself? I would. You know, it was a very funny sketch back in the day in Saturday Night Live. Apparently, he did this incredibly rated X version of Harry Carey negotiating with a prostitute. <laughs> that apparently was so filthy, but yet so hilarious. Um, and that's the type of thing that you just can't do on Saturday Night Live. But, you know, you friends and other comics, you can just roll off into craziness. Uh, and then the other person who I was absolutely blown away is they showed up in a t-shirt and like gym shorts and like kind of sweaty and frantic and was over at the burger truck eating and I went up to him like, holy shit. I walked over him and Ming saw who I was walking over and Ming's like, holy shit. And we walked over and it was Quentin Tarantino. And he's eating this burger. I'm like, oh, Mr. Tarantino, a huge, huge, huge fan of yours. Love all your work, blah, blah, blah. Thank you, thank you, man, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. And he's finishing this burger and was like, uh, uh, what you got coming up next? I can't wait. And he's like, well, yeah, I just got done writing this really epic kind of film. And uh, so I literally, literally, literally just came from doing the last cut draft of writing it. And so I'm like, oh. So I had my card with me. I'm like, uh, you know, if, if you ever, need some pasty white dude and you know by all means uh, you've seen my work and stuff and so uh, it turns out 
we find out later on that what he had just finished that night and then came from his house writing to the after party because he wasn't at the premiere he only came for the after party i guess he was just i'm hungry you know um uh he had just got done writing kill bill and i was just like what and so i was this close to being personally denied by him and being in kill bill which i have only said what is it so so there's a photo of me and ming with with Tarantino in between us. And you can tell, like, he's just like, who are these fucking guys? Why, why am I taking, I just wanted a burger. So, uh, that was a really cool moment. Um, another cool moment, I gotta say, working with uh, the great late George Carlin, uh, a comedic god that I knew, like my dad loved him, I loved him. I loved him on everything he ever did. And uh, when HBO started doing comedy specials, which were rare, back in the, like, that was like, when that was a thing, and he did his, I was just like, this guy is an interdimensional god with his logic. Like, he was so good at pulling out the, the stupidity of, like, government and, and all this other stuff that was just like, holy shit. He's definitely the watcher or somebody who's coming down to give us a warning. Even to this day, people repeat, put up his, is like you, you know, whatever's on YouTube of him talking about a certain current event then that is completely still legit today. And uh, uh, it was great when I played Grant Hicks in Dogma and he played Cardinal Glick in Dogma where he was introducing Catholicism Wow, the, the revamped version of Catholicism, uh, their advertising campaign, their publicity campaign. I got to sit in the makeup trailer with him. I was getting my makeup done, he was two seats down getting his makeup done, and you know, he was super friendly. And it was just the two of us and the hair and makeup people were working on us. He's like, hey, son, where are you from? And I was like, actually, I'm from the Bronx in New York. No shit, what part? And I told him what part I lived in. He's like, that, I, that's right. I was like, I know, Mr. Carlin. Uh, he goes, no, no, call me George. I'm like, oh my God, thank you. Uh, I go, yeah, I lived in the Bronx uh, for the first 10 years of my life and talked about different neighborhoods. He's, I said my two older brothers went to Cardinal Hayes and St. Raymond's and uh, I went to Holy Family and he's like, holy shit. And so we were just bullshitting about living in the Bronx and you know, how, you know, and how he enjoyed my performance in the clerks and stuff like that. And um, I knew that I was gonna be working with him. So before, I, when we were, we were shooting in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, no less. Uh, and so when we, when I knew I was going out there, I bought his latest book, which was called Brain Droppings, which are just short thoughts. It's an amazing book if you get a chance to buy it or find it online uh, as an ebook if it's there. Um, so I brought it with me. And so uh, I said, I know this is inappropriate, um, but gee, I, in my bag here, I have your copy of Brain Droppings. So he's like, oh, thank you for buying the book. I said, do you mind? He goes, give me the book. And he grabbed the Sharpie and he signed it from one Bronx boy to another. Uh, much love. George and so uh, I was like wow and then he's like you want a photo and at the time when um, you get your hair and makeup done they like to do what's called a continuity photograph so that you're fully in your costume and they make you do you know just stand like you're being put in front of a lineup so they make sure that if you work on a separate day in real reality but in the film it's just minutes later that you look exactly the same your hair is parted the same way and all this other stuff so he's like well, let's take a picture so at the time Photos were done Polaroids, the big Polaroids, and it, because digital cameras weren't out yet. And so Polaroid decided to do this version of Polaroid pictures that were just a strip. It wasn't the big square ones with the white bottom that you normally see traditional Polaroids. It was just like a strip with a tiny thing. So I have this strip of me as Grant Hicks and, uh, and, and him as Cardinal Glick next to each other in the makeup trailer. And he signed that as well. And that is the bookmark of that book that I have on my shelf. And it's a, it's a moment that I'll, I'll never forget. And it, another moment was the night he passed away. I was in uh, Pittsburgh, weirdly enough, I was in Pittsburgh again uh, at Horror Hound, which is a horror convention uh, there. And um, I had heard it on the radio in my room. It was like one in the morning, East Coast time. and. Uh, when he passed and when he got onto the news on the radio and I just so happened to have the radio in the room on, on in the news channel. And I heard it and I was like, what? And I remembered I got my phone and I immediately texted Kevin. And I said, Kevin, I just heard George died of a heart attack or something. And he wrote me back and he said, yes. He goes, I'm so upset. 
I'm literally writing a, a, a memorial piece for Variety magazine as we speak. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. He goes, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm crying as I'm writing this. I'm like, I, I can tell, you know, through, just through the text. And so I, I remember that day and that was terrible, but 